Next, let's head up to the fence now and welcome in our colleague, Rock Kabaku of MassInSports.com. And Rock, let's see, anytime you hear J.J. Hardy back, MRI, and going to see Dr. Jacobs, everybody gets alarmed. What's going on with J.J. Hardy as he heads back to Baltimore? Well, they're really downplaying it, but you're right on the surface. That always sounds bad. He's flying out tonight at 840, back to Baltimore. He's got an appointment at 1 o'clock tomorrow with Dr. Jacobs. They're going to examine the back, and he may get an MRI. That's what's expected. Most likely get another cortisone injection like he had back in April. So that all sounds bad. And J.J. and Buck both say, look, these aren't spasms this time. The muscles aren't tightening up. There's just still a little bit of discomfort. J.J. did some baseball activities today. He hit. He threw, he did some fielding. He said he could just still field a little bit, so why take a chance? If it were an emergency, if they needed him tonight, he would be in the lineup. But it's not an emergency. They don't need him. They figured they'd fly him back to go ahead and just have him get tested. They probably will give him an injection at least because it worked last time. Remember in April, he missed five straight games. He said it's not nearly as bad as it was in Detroit then. So there's no point in him flying back here either. We're not going to see him again until Friday. Why put him on a plane, send him back here just to turn right around and fly him back to Baltimore again? just more stress on the back. So he's going to stay in Baltimore. They have the off day Thursday, and Buck is hopeful that he'll be in the lineup Friday. They have that doubleheader against the Yankees. So we'll see. Fingers crossed, but again, it's not serious, they don't think, but why take a chance? Why push him? Ryan Flaherty will make another start at shortstop. Buck said he's really the first choice to fill in there, even with the back-to-back -back errors in the ninth inning these last two games. Jonathan Scope's also a consideration. Remember, Lexi Casillas in Sarasota on the taxi squad. He would probably be maybe a third or fourth option but right now there are no plans to bring him up now rock the orioles really uncharacteristically have struggled defensively uh, and this goes back the last 22 games they've committed 16 errors in the last 22 games they had committed 16 errors in the prior 67 games prior to the stretch now is buck concerned about this you mentioned the errors by flaherty in back-to-back -back games and he is the backup shortstop so if hardy's not there he's got to go out and play and he's expected to get the job done Right, but who's counting, right? <laughs> well, uh, I did. Yeah. I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. I was told there'd be no math. Uh, they don't seem overly concerned. I think the thing is, once you lose Manny Machado, I mean, that's going to hurt you more than, than not having his bat in the lineup. It's not having that glove, the platinum glove at third base. Chris Davis does okay there, but then when he had Steve Pierce out, you had to move Chris back to first. That led to that revolving door at third base. Jimmy Paredes had a little bit of trouble there. Uh, Kelly Johnson's been playing it. Then when you have Flaherty over at shortstop, he's a very good third baseman, but you need him at short with J.J. out. So that kind of weakens you there as well. As Buck said, anybody you compare to J.J. Hardy is going to come in second. So that's the problem there. And then you have in the outfield guys who aren't used to playing with each other there. David Lowe teamed up with Alejandro De Aza. You saw what happened yesterday, the collision, the inside the park home run. Those guys just aren't familiar with each other there. Lowe hasn't played a lot of center field for the Orioles, and there's a miscommunication. So I think it's just guys that are kind of having to be rotate different positions. The benefit of having all these extra guys in September is you could go ahead and use them, but then, of course, it can disrupt the flow that you had, the rhythm defensively. So it's a shame, too, because the defensive numbers are always so good in this club, and they're a little skewered now because of these errors lately. All right, Rock, enjoy the game. Uh, go get yourself a Fenway Frank and put it on Dempsey's tab. He says it's okay. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. All right, that's Rock Kabaka.